Hello everyone, this is Code Pulse here, and in this series we are going to be creating our very own simple MAT interpreter in Python. This is useful for learning the basics of how computers process human readable formats, and is a great first step to creating your own programming language, uh, data language, etc. So this interpreter can evaluate simple MAT calculations, so if we add 5 and 5 we'll get 10, if we divide 8 and 2 we'll get 4, but it can also have multiple operators and take into account the order of operation. So if we do 2 plus 3 multiplied by 4 minus 5, the interpreter will figure out to do the multiply operation first before performing the rest of the calculations. Whereas we can now put the brackets around 2 plus 3 and it will give us a different result. I recommend you try to create a simple interpreter on your own first and see how far you get. And then come back to this series and see how I approach it. So as I've already mentioned, we'll be creating this program in Python. So if you haven't got it already, you can download Python 3 from python.org slash downloads. And I think we need at least version 3.7. I'll be using the Visual Studio Code IDE for this project, but feel free to use whatever IDE you want. So we'll start off with creating our main.py file. And the first thing we need to do is request input from the user. So I'm just going to assign that to the text variable. We'll also wrap that in an infinite loop so that we can keep inputting calculations. So if we run our program, we should be able to enter in a bunch of input, but it won't do anything yet. So now we'll be moving on to creating the lexer, the first fundamental part to allowing your program to understand a custom text format. So that's what we'll be doing in the first episode. The lexer groups the input characters into small segments called tokens and figures out the type of each token. The lexer will grow through the input character by character as signalled by this arrow. The first character of the input is a digit and so the lexer figures out that this is the start of a number. So the lexer keeps track of this token type and also keeps track of the current built up value. The lexer then advances to the next character and it is still a digit so we continue to build up the number. We keep going through another digit, this time a decimal point, another digit and another digit and now we've built up the entire number. The next character is no longer a digit or a decimal point, and so that's the end of that number token. So then that token is saved in a list of tokens. The current character is now a white space, and in our program the white space doesn't have any effect, so we just ignore the white space and advance to the next character. We've now found a plus symbol, and so that represents a plus token. And in this case there is no value we need to keep track of because all plus tokens are the same. So next we have another white space character and this is once again ignored. Now we have another digit so that is the start of another number. And then we advance to another digit that's once again added to the number token. Then we come across a white space so that's no longer a digit so we are finished with the number token. This time we come across a multiply operator so now this is a multiply token. And similarly to the plus token uh, there is no value associated with it. We now come across another white space character, so that's once again ignored. And we move on to a final number token, and we build up each digit, and then that is the end of the lexing process. So you can see we've got all the tokens built up. So we'll be writing the code for the lexer in this video. And in the next video, we'll be writing code that looks at the sequence of tokens and figures out what's supposed to happen. So if we have a number followed by a plus and followed by another number, then we know we have to add those two numbers together. So we are back in Visual Studio Code and we'll create a new file for our tokens and we're going to call this tokens.py. So in here we are going to define all our different token types. So to do that we are going to create a token type enum. Each token type is going to have an ID which is a number and what an enum allows us to do is associate a name with that ID. So the first token type we have is a number token and we'll give this an ID of 0. And as you've seen we also have a plus token so that'll be an ID of 1. And we have a token type for the rest of the operators so that's minus multiply and divide. And we're also going to have a token type for parentheses so a left parentheses and a right parentheses. And in order to actually create this enum we are going to have to import it from the python enum package. Next we'll define what a token actually is and we'll use a data class to do this. And a data class is just a class that can hold different fields and values. So as we've already seen, each token has a type, so we'll create a field called type. And the value of that has to be one of the token types we defined above. And it also has a value field. And this will be any type and that can vary depending on what the token type is. 
and once again as we've seen some tokens don't actually have a value and so we'll just create a default value of none in that case. I've also added this representation method but you don't need to worry too much about this. This is just useful for debugging so if we print out a token at any stage it will print it out in a nice format. So it will be the token name, a colon and the token value only if it has a value. So in order to create this token data class, we are once again going to need to import a data class from the data classes Python package. So now we can finally start on the lecture. So we're going to create a new file called lecture.py. So we'll create a class for the lecture. And in the constructor, we will be taking in the text that we will be processing. So this can be just assigned to self.text for further use. And we'll also make this text an iterator. And if you're not sure what that is, you'll see what that is in a moment. We are now going to create a generate tokens method. So this method will basically do what it says. It will generate all the tokens from the input text. So before we continue that method, we're going to need to keep track of the current character at any stage inside the lexer. The way we're going to do that is we're going to create an advance method. So this method will move on to the next character and save it in self.current character. So because the text is an iterator, we can just use the Python next function on the text and that will give us the next character. We are actually going to wrap this in a try accept, and this will detect when we've reached the end of the input using the stop iteration exception. And once we've reached the end of the input, we are going to assign the current character to none instead. So before we start doing anything in the lecture, we need to advance to the very first character, so we can do that up here. And now we can start working on the generate tokens method. So this will have to be a loop and it will keep going while the current character is not equal to none. So until we've reached the end of the input. So we're going to be skipping any white space. So we'll add a check if the current character is a white space character. And in that case, we can just advance to the next character. Now, of course, we have to define what white space characters are. So we'll do that at the top of the file and we'll create a constant called white space. So this will hold a space character, a new line character and a tab character. And so all of those types of spaces will be ignored. Now we'll move on to the most complicated token and that is the number token. We know we've come across a number when the current character is a digit or a decimal point. So we can just add in a check for exactly that. So if the current character is a decimal point or the current character is a digit. Once again, we need to define what digits are at the top of the file. So what I'm just going to do is enter in all the possible digits. So we're going to put the logic for building up a number in a separate generate number method. And we also want to return the token given by this generate number method. So I should have mentioned already that the generate tokens method has to return multiple tokens. And so we're going to use an iterator for that. So because we're using an iterator, instead of using the return keyword, we're going to use the yield keyword. So we'll start on the generate number method. And we need to keep track of the built up number and we're going to do that using a string and we'll call it number string. And the start of this number is going to be the current character. So that is the character we came across in this check. So basically we need to keep advancing to the next character until we no longer find a digit or a decimal point and then we know we've reached the end of the number token. So first of all we'll advance past the current character and now we'll create that loop. So we first of all have to check while the current character is not equal to none because we might have also reached the end of the input. But assuming it's not none, we'll keep the loop going while the current character is a decimal point or the current character is a digit. And there's actually one more way in which we can reach the end of a number token and that's if we reach a second decimal point because a number can only have one decimal point in it. So we'll create a variable that keeps track of how many decimal points we've come across so far and that will of course start at zero. And if the current character is a decimal point then we can just increase that count. And so if you've reached the second decimal point then we can just break out of this loop and that is the end of the token. Otherwise we can now go ahead and build up our string. So we'll append the current character to the string and then we advance to the next character and the entire string will get built up. So in our interpreter, we can actually leave out a leading or trailing zero. So we can type in, for example, 0.123. And what that really means is 0 0.123. And in a similar way, we can write 12 dot, which really means 12.0, or in other words, 12. So if our number starts with a decimal point, we will add back that zero. So number string is zero plus the rest of the number string. And we'll copy and paste that and do the same thing for the end of the string. 
So if it ends with a decimal point, we will just add a zero to the end. So now that we've got our number built up, we can create a token and return it. So we'll return our token and we know that the token type has to be a number. For the value, well, it is currently a string and we need to actually convert it to a proper number. And I've just decided we'll use a float to do that. You could also use an integer if there is no decimal point, but I'm just going to stick with a float. And don't forget we need to import token and token type from our tokens module. So that's it for the number and now we can come back to the generate tokens method and move on to the rest of the tokens which are much easier. So we'll now do the plus token so we'll check if the current character is a plus symbol. So we'll advance past it and we now know we need to yield a plus token. So the token type will be plus and we don't have any value. So we can actually just copy and paste that for the rest of the symbols. So next we have a minus and we'll create a minus token. Next we have a multiply, so we'll look for a star and then we'll return a multiply token. We then have divide, so that'll be a slash. And finally the last two will be a left and right parentheses. So the L paren token and then R paren. So the final thing we'll do is add in an else statement. And this block of code will be called if we come across a character that we do not understand. And so in that case we are going to raise an exception. So we'll say that there is an illegal character and we'll also put in that character. So self.current character. So that is actually it for the lexer. I hope it wasn't too complicated. So now we can come back into main.py and at the top we will import the lexer. And we'll create a new lexer instance and pass in the text of the user input and that is assigned to the lexer variable. So then we can obtain the tokens by calling generate tokens on the lexer. So we should now be able to just print out a list of those tokens. So now we should be able to once again run the program. And now if we put in some input, you can see it generates some tokens. So this looks correct. We have a number token, a plus token, and another number token. We can also use parentheses. We can use numbers with decimal points, multiply, divide, etc. And of course, the syntax for this input is incorrect. And that's what we'll be working on in the next video. But for now, it is generating the tokens successfully. So that is going to be it for the first episode of this series. Thank you all for watching and big thanks to Helsver Hesevik for supporting me via Patreon. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you have any problems, just leave a comment below. And it turns out that only 10% of you are subscribed. So if you're enjoying this series, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And you shouldn't miss any of my future videos. So I will see you all in the next episode.